I like my air conditioners like I like my women. Durable, attractive, and easy. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the shop build. Today is a huge day for me. A day that I've been dreaming about for like 30 years. So I'm gonna guide you through the steps today that it takes to install your own air conditioner and show you and prove to you that one, it's not that expensive and two, it's easy. So stop working in the heat. Okay, so our building is a standard steel construction. I did install this fan up here and that's gonna help you to pull the hot air down. And this, this in conjunction, now this is an inexpensive fan. It's huge, it's six foot. But this in conjunction with the air conditioning system really helps to circulate that air. You, want, you don't want that hot air sitting up top. You know, heat does rise. And uh, you don't want the cool air at the bottom. You really wanna mix this stuff around. So we went with the Mr. Cool. Olympus series 24k heads and I have two of those the cool thing about this system is you can actually run more than one head off of a compressor in fact the compressor or the outdoor unit that I have actually I think I can run up to five different zones that's incredible so you could literally install this in any room in any house that you want and cool multiple different zones with one unit one unit incredible when you're cooling an area that's this large or this poorly insulated, I mean it's got insulation, but there's a huge garage door there, is this gonna take a huge amount of power to run a unit to cool this? I mean, you're talking, oh, electric bill would probably be in my zone somewhere around $300 a month because you're drawing an insane amount of amps. But this is where the inverter technology comes in. Take my air compressor, for example. When I come over here and I fire it up, <laughs> It takes a huge amount of power to get that whole rotating mass going and it just turns on. It just bam, it hits you really, really fast. It's the same with every air conditioner, old school air conditioner on the side of your house. It's either on or off. There's, there's nothing in between. And, and that's not an efficient way to operate an air conditioner. What you would like to do is have it slowly spool up just enough to get to the desired temperature and both in the compressor and in the fan unit. These guys don't require big capacitors to store energy for startup every five minutes. They stay on and they stay operating and they maintain. So as opposed to the three or $400 a month to cool this place with a traditional unit, after doing the math, I'm gonna be spending somewhere more around, depending on how often I'm in here, 80 to 100 bucks a month. That's something that I can live with cost-wise. Don't miss the second annual Good of the Land Fest on October 26, 2019. Brought to you by Evaporust. Get your tickets now at thegoodoftheland.com or gotlfest.com. So this is going to intimidate a lot of people and the fact that uh, I have my hand anywhere near this right now is going to terrify a lot of uh, elect chickens. But <laughs> I can assure you everything is safe in here as long as I don't stick my hand into these two bars. If you're unfamiliar with this, just step out, just step away, have someone else do it. What I did was ran a 50 amp circuit and I've got it run through armor cable right here all the way out to the back and I'll show you that right now. So I just installed a little disconnect box right here. When you're out here working on the unit, you want to be able to disconnect it from here. That way the guy who's working on it doesn't have to go inside your house. You can power down the unit from here. So last night we poured a little slab and uh, now the next step is get the unit out here and set it up. Just by looking at this, I haven't looked at the wire diagram or anything. This is how easy this is to install. Power, power, neutral. Okay, so this goes here, and we know we're gonna be coming up into this area. And so I'm gonna go with this top one, pop that out. We probably wanna turn a little bit, you know, because if you look here, we wanna be pointing that direction. Push this down in here. And now we're bar blocked into place. All right, make sure we have enough wire which it does look like we do. These lock in place, so they're sprung one direction. 
just loosen up a screw, slide your earth in. The first electrician that leaves a comment about this being some kind of voodoo science and you have to have all these permits and all that stuff, um, we're gonna pin your name to the cop at the top and we're gonna make fun of you. That's the deal, that's what we're gonna do. So, there we are. Now let's come over to this side. We need to hit one of our knockouts. And as you can see, this kind of fits right inside that hole. So we need to knock the second one out. So whichever word is up, well, that's the position we want it in. We don't want this to kick on. We're gonna leave it in the off position, lock our box back, take a look at our line. <clears throat> One thing I do wanna do because I have dogs and they can come by and hit this, is I'm probably gonna put up a little bit of block right here and a little bit right over here. So in a traditional system, what you would have is this huge, <laughs> massive ductwork, as well as what they call an air handler. So they would, it's, a, it's a massive unit. It's about the size of this table that you would normally use in a house this big. Instead, we got two of these little light boxes. Oh, it's so satisfying. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Come on, girl. So we have our wires fished through here and we have a black, a red, a white, and a green. Now, the only one I really want you to focus on is the green because that's gonna go in the ground. But we have three more wires. Which one do we put where, right? We have a black, a red, and a white. It doesn't matter. They're numbered. These colors don't matter until you choose a spot. Then this becomes number one, this becomes number two, and this becomes number three. And so now I've got red, black, and white written there and I know where the wires go outside. very simple I mean you just you pop a couple pieces together uh, the top slides on this and you just slide you know you just slide it all together throw a couple screws in it and it's good to go we've already got that one done over there literally we've been that one took us 10 minutes and that's the first one we did on this job so um, pretty happy with this it looks really good once it's done all right Randy's out here and uh, from FHM Outfitters and <laughs> you got two businesses which is just like as Texas man as you can get, dude. He's got a hog hunting rig, and I'll show you guys in a little bit. And then he's also an AC tech. And um, and so he's the guy that's helped me out with uh, some of my previous air conditioner stuff. Because this is the part where you need a professional. Or if you have the tools, you can do it yourself. But I like to have a professional here. So that if there is any problems, he's going to he's gonna know what they are immediately. And it's going to save me time and money because my time is worth money. So he'll find anything that's wrong with his system, anything that's wrong with my install. We good to go. What are you doing now, brother? Uh, we're hooking up uh, the vacuum pump. We're gonna pull a good uh, vacuum on this system and get it down into negative pressure and check for leaks on any fittings so the frequent does not leak out. And we're gonna open up this. And on these mini splits, you only got one side where you can tie it to. You can't do your suction and your head, your high side on, on both of them, you only tie into one port. Now does it matter vacuum. that there's two, since we're using A and B, do you only just, you just vacuum one side down? Cause yeah. that'll vacuum the whole unit, right? Yeah, we'll have to pull, we'll have to pull through this line set for this first head and we'll do this one. And then we'll uh, do the next line set, pull it through because it's sealed off right here. It's sealed off on these king valves. Okay. It's shut down so refrigerant can't come back yet. Okay. Oh yeah, that's the sound we're looking for. That 
will work. So I've had the unit installed for about a month and I've been doing a little bit of testing so that you guys will know what kind of unit, what size unit you want to put in your shop. Kind of wanted to run some tests, see exactly what it took to keep this shop cool, and then pass that information on to you to help you guys size your unit for your shop. This is a 1,200 square foot shop. The peak is about 15 feet. The sidewalls are 12 foot, and it has about three inches of insulation on it. I say three inches, I think it's actually 10 inches deep, but it's compressed, right? So when you take those panels, you smash them up against the wall, they compress. It's not the best insulation. So we have a lot of future projects that are going in here, and if I was gonna do this, I wanted to do it right, and I wanted to do it one time. So I thought I was going a little overkill with this project, um, but with the high ceilings and everything, we just weren't sure. Turns out I was. I think it could be 120 in this shop and I think I could get it down to 65. So let me show you how I operate the air conditioner system now. So unit one, I keep setting anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees with the fan on low. Unit two over here, I just completely leave it turned off. And the good thing about this is I'm pretty much running this, this unit like on quarter throttle, if even that. Like it's, it's barely even operating. It's just keeping up with any heat loss that we're gonna have through poor insulation. And that in turn has saved us a ton of cash. I'm actually spending a little less than I thought I would. I primarily use the man door so I walk in and out, but when I'm pulling a vehicle in, you open that door, that door is like 30% of one entire wall, that garage door. The heat just wants to come flooding in and that cool air wants to blow out, you know, everything high will drop down and roll out the bottom of the door. So if it's 100 degrees outside, I've got the shop at 65, 70 degrees. It can heat up pretty quick to about 80 degrees in here. Now that's not uncomfortable by any means. That's what I'm saying. I'm just pushing this unit, doing a little bit of testing. At that point in time, I just kick the other unit on high and within 10 minutes, it's back down to its normal operating temperature, which is too cold. It's actually uncomfortably cold in here, especially for the middle of summer. I acclimate to the summer. So, so if you have a shop this size, this is a 30 by 40 and you've got the same sort of basic insulation that I have, you're not going to have any problem running an 18,000 BTU unit or 24,000 if you want to kick it up notch. I've got a tw that's a 24,000 BTU unit right there and it's on low. I'll put links to Mr. Cool's website right down here. You can read up about these guys. Don't miss the second annual Good of the Land Fest on October 26, 2019. Brought to you by Evaporust. Get your tickets now at thegoodoftheland.com or gotlfest.com.